Hi, folks. Is there enough light for me to read here? Oh, there we go. Okay, good. So, uh, thank you, John. Thank you, James, because you both brought up things that inform my talk, which is what we can learn from history. This is a story that I love to tell, to retell, because it's mostly based on the work of two historians, Simon Schaffer and Stephen Shapin. And uh, they wrote together a book in uh, 1985 called Leviathan and the Air Pump, which was about the history of a scientific dispute, a thermonuclear level dispute between Thomas Hobbes and Robert Boyle. Robert Boyle was one of the co-founders of the Royal Society. And uh, with himself and a bunch of friends, a bunch of their contemporaries, Boyle was interested especially in two things. He was specifically interested in the workings of the air and the, the role that air had in uh, respiration and the circulation of the blood. And he was uh, also interested in other aspects of biology and physics. In fact, he was the founder of Boyle's Law. Together with his buddy Robert Hooke, who was a very nasty man by all accounts, uh, Boyle and uh, uh, Hooke together worked on building and maintaining and acquiring the most prestigious and sophisticated instrument of its day. The air pump, a uh, round sphere made of glass that had a sucker in the bottom that would take the air out of the pump and then they would put stuff inside like little critters or uh, uh, polished pieces of marble and see if they fell apart in the vacuum because they believed that there was such a thing as a vacuum. Boyle's big issue, one of the things that he wanted to solve was he wanted to solve this, this uh, a problem of how to describe his new invention, experimental philosophy. Experimental philosophy had a set of protocols associated with it. How do you trust it? Boyle proposed three things. First of all, he proposed instrumentation. Get complicated, sophisticated in, in, uh, instruments that allow us to vex nature and get human fallibility and observational weakness out of the way. The second thing was, he said, you've got to, when you perform your experiments, get a group of witnesses around to watch so they can testify afterwards that the experimenter actually did what he said he was going to do. Third, you need to create a writing style, a writing style that would include several things. It would include a protocol, a set of steps to follow, and that it would include also plans for building the machine that uh, you had built, if there were any, and a description of your method and interpretation of your results. In other words, Boyle effectively invented the recording and reporting of testing activity. And he also said, as part of the claims for this, that it would help to solve what he saw as a major social problem that still exists today. And that is, how and who do you trust? How do you assign trust? He claimed that you could solve these major social problems, a problem of trust, with the protocols of experimental philosophy. And Hobbes said, BS. No way. Hobbes was one of the most uh, powerful intellects of the, uh, of the era of the 17th century, and as uh, uh, Simon Schaffer has described him, possibly the most irascible man alive in that, uh, in that century. He pointed out a bunch of things. First of all, he said, your air pump leaks. How can you make claims about the vacuum when you can't even get a vacuum? And besides, he said, he added just as a by the by, I don't believe there's such a thing in the vacuum. You do, and therefore all of your experiments are theory laden. You're observing stuff, and you're describing it and explaining it only because you have a theory there up front that explains it. Well, what if you have a different theory? And he offered a few. He also said, how do you know, just because your thing works here in London, how do you know that it works in Bristol or on the continent? or everywhere else in the world. You can't make universal claims about your experiment until you've actually gone to those other places and checked them out. The last objection that Hobbes had, uh, that I'm going to mention anyway, is that he said people would not give up their ideas just because you did an experiment. If their interests clash, they will clash. They won't just give up and say, oh, well, now that you've done the experiment, you must be right. They will hold on to those beliefs perhaps irrationally, which is interesting. Because here was Hobbes, one of the great rationalists, uh, uh, one of the authors of modernity, as uh, uh, one fellow said. Here he was making these ironic claims that humans would continue to behave irrationally. So it's fascinating. 
So Hobbes forced Boyle eventually and his colleagues to temper the truth claims about science, about experimental philosophy, and to be a little more specific and a little more precise about what they could actually get away with saying. Hobbes also maintained that there were other theories, but the most amazing thing about it was his wonderful faith in the fact that people would hold on to their irrational ideas, even when given evidence of the, the uh, fallibility of the ideas. Fast forward, exactly 350 years later, here we are. Our air pumps leak, QTP. <clears throat> when something works, how do you know that it works everywhere in the world? You don't. That's the platform problem. That's the problem that we have with variations in circumstances, in data, in timing, all those different variances that we see in testing. Social problems will get solved socially. They won't get solved by testing. They won't get solved by experiment. We're going to have to do that. Our experiments and our observations are theory-laden. And if people have objections to their uh, theories, they will clash. What Hobbes was proposing was testing of science and testing of testing, putting science under its own microscope. I say that we do the same thing, that we need criticism and controversy in our craft if our craft is going to proceed. Uh, uh, proceed. That's why we must test testing. We must welcome controversy and disagreement to sharpen the craft. Thanks.